Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So, um, if I fall behind on stuff, if I am late, it's time trying to get out early. Um, this is an extended household. It's a two family home. My parents live downstairs, Rachel and I live upstairs. And my mother tested positive for COVID a week ago. And my father tested positive for COVID Sunday, two days ago. So, yeah, uh, Rich and I still are uh, COVID-free. We've been alternating testing every day. So she was COVID-free this morning. But if I fall behind on stuff, it's just that it's a you know, little hectic parents are doing well. But it does put a little stressor on stuff. So I was reading around and poking around in Enworld, and they were talking about something that I remember very clearly from my AD&D days, 1E, was training costs. And even when we did this, we didn't do it like, like they're saying here. Okay? I do remember the... I don't even think we, we really read anything further then level of the trainee character times 1500 was the weekly cost during study training. And that was it. I don't think, I don't recall reading the rest of this in detail because this is scary stuff. I mean, we actually wound up uh, doing away with training costs for low level characters because the reality was if you were playing a, a thief, it costs more to train then you would actually have experience points potentially earned to gain that level. And it just seemed very restrictive to low-level characters. And for high-level characters, the amount of gold that you need to acquire would... Uh, I, there's just too much gold in the world. But here, let, let, let's just take a peek at this. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i make some comments, make some observations. And uh, but this is hidden away, by the way. I have, It took me a while to find this. This is on page 86, I believe, of the DMG, AD&D 1E, Dungeon Master's Guide, Gaining Experience Levels. And this isn't even the whole article on it, but this is the part that I thought was, because it goes on to, oh, when you're higher levels, once you're name level, then we got to change the whole. Experience points are merely an indicator of the character's progress towards greater proficiency in his or her chosen profession. Upward Progress is never automatic just because Nell Nimblefinger's Rogue of the Thieves Guild has managed to acquire 1,251 experience points. Does not mean she suddenly becomes Nell Nimblefinger's the footpad. The gaining of sufficient experience points is necessary to indicate that a character is eligible to gain a level of experience, but the actual award is a matter for you, the DM, to decide. Oh, all right. Well, but then not quite because now you have this whole. It's also like doing algebra coming up here, or Gygaxian math because there's always steps that I think go too far. But I guess that's the war gamer in him. Consider the natural functions of each class of character. Consider also the professional align professed alignment of each character. Briefly assess the performance of each character after an adventure. That's key. By the way, I never, you never did this. Did he or she perform basically in the character of his or her class or his or her actions in keeping with his or her professed alignment? Mentally classify the overall performance as, and this is, this is like elementary school grades, excellent, superior, fair, poor. Okay. Fair enough. Clerics who refuse to help and heal or do not remain faithful to their deity. Fighters who hang back from combat or attempt to steal or fail to boldly lead. Magic users who seek to engage in melee or ignore magic items they could employ in critical, crucial situations. Thieves who boldly engage in frontal attacks or refrain from acquisition of an extra bit of treasure when the opportunity presents itself. In other words, stealing from the party, right? Is that it? Or stealing before the party knows about it? I, I don't... Uh, cautious characters who do not pull their own weight. These are all clear examples of a poor rating. What kind of, char is it, is it, what kind of character are you playing? Are you 
playing a weak fighter, maybe he should be hanging back. Uh, if you have a cleric who's cast all their spells, and are you saying that the only spells that should be memorizing are heal spells? Which is interesting because you don't get a heal spell after first after your first level spells until your fourth level spells, right? Second and third level cleric spells are no there's no healing in there. All right. Um award experience points normally. When each character is given his or her total, also give them an alphabetic rating. I never recall ever reading this until now. And I'm sure I did, and I'm sure I went, this is bullshit. But I was the GM, the DM, 90% of the time in our uh, D&D sessions. And I never gave out a letter, a letter grade. All right, yeah, you, you, you were poor. We're sorry. We're gonna have your your parents are gonna have to come in for, uh, you know, uh, parent player character conference. We're gonna have to discuss your performance. What the? F when a character's total experience points indicates eligibility for an advancement level, use the alphabetic assessment to assign equal weight to the behavior of the character during each separate adventure. The amount of bookkeeping that was required to do AD and D one e by the book is why I don't think anybody did it by the book. Regardless of how many or few experience points were gained in each, the result in total is then divided by the number of entries to come up with some number from one to four. This number indicates the number of weeks the character must spend in study and or training before he or she actually gains the benefits of the new level. Be certain that all decimals are retained and each 1.45 equals a game day. Go screw. All right. In all honesty, there was no way uh, 12, 13-year-old me was going to be doing math like that. You hit your experience points, you level up. You might just say, hey, yeah, and, uh, you know, you knock off 1,500 gold. We we didn't do strict time. That's, no, that's another video you could do. But hey, we're not even done yet. Not only must game time be spent by the character desiring advancement, but treasure will have to be spent as well. The amount of gold pieces or the equivalent value in gems, jewelry, magic items, etc. Well, I got my magic sword, but I got to sell it just to level up. It is found by using the following simple formula. Level of the trainee character times 1,500 equals the weekly cost during study slash training. But the level of the level of the expiring character should be computed at current, not the gain level, which makes sense. Initial study and or training must be conducted under the tutelage of character of the same class and profession as a trainee. A fighter must train under a fighter, a paladin under a paladin, a druid under a druid, etc. Note that the tutor might accept my possibly accept some combination of gold and or gold and service in return for tutelage at the DM's option exception. A character with a performance score under two need not be tutored, but the study and or training time will be twice the indicated period. And that means twice the gold piece expense. Who are you paying it to? God only knows. If a character has a performance score of two or greater, and he or she is unable to locate a mentor to train him, the character must remain at his or her current level until such time as a tutor can be located in the necessary training and or study course, be paid for and completed before any gain of experience level is granted. Note that self-training costs more as expenses are per week and the potential option of service is excluded. Holy shit. I mean... And, and what do you do with classes like oh how there aren't two how many paladins are around not many right what if you guys are adventuring in uh, I, I mean I don't know how this would actually play if uh, characters were doing an actual hex crawl sandbox and then yeah, oh someone sort of level hit the point has enough experience points to level up all right we got to find where, how many hexes away is the nearest pal oh he's but you get there he's not there I mean. No paladin. I, this is because it's the solution to getting too much gold out of a campaign. Because remember, gold pieces were an easy way for you to 
go up in level. The idea was you weren't necessarily being heroic. You were pretty much all acting as tomb robbers, right? It was more beneficial for you as a player character to steal the treasure than to actually engage the combatants. But as players, we always wanted to kick ass and take take names and then grab their shit. We weren't looking to steal. And I, there's there's this is trying to encourage a certain style of gameplay that I did not see in any of the groups I was in in my AD&D or even 2E uh, era of gaming. But I'd like to hear feedback on this because this is going to be one of those where people are going to go, we had to give out letter grades. Again, these are the same letter grades I recall from elementary school. Excellent. Uh, actually, it was it was excellent, good, satisfactory, and poor. Mm. Excellent, superior, fair, poor. I don't know. Folks, did you play with these rules? Did you, was this part of your campaign? Not just the big the $1,500, 1500 gold pieces per level. Yeah, we, 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 we did that initially. But did you give out a letter grade? Did you really worry about finding instructors that just say, you know, we're going to hand wave? It's just more stuff, more bookkeeping on top of bookkeeping. AD&D 1E was a bookkeeping game. We talk about that how it's a resource you know driven game well this is just another part of it i'd like to hear what you all did leave a comment below uh otherwise hey we're still in the midst of the what the endemic please you know use your common sense seeing around my household common sense be safe be well god bless roll those dice roll them well and back tomorrow with uh a live stream with Bad Mike. That should be a lot of fun. So, I'll see you then. Catch you later.